Welcome to the Earth Feels Podcast. I'm Rose. And I'm Christine. Welcome to Earth Feels, the podcast for people feeling overwhelmed by the endlessly gloomy climate news. Where every week we have soul-based conversations about climate change and explore the idea that climate change may be happening for us as much as it is happening to us. If you are ready to shift your focus and secure the future for our kids and our grandkids, then this is the podcast for you. And yes, we do know how to spell. (laughs) Hello, it's Rose here. Christine is off today, taking care of some other things. Rather than let a week go by in between our podcasts, I decided that I'd like to address something that's come up for me this week. I'm assuming that's coming up, coming up for a lot of people. And that is, how is climate crisis affecting our mental health? So this week, I participated in the second virtual global climate reality training, along with 6,000 of my closest concerned friends. And when I say this was the second, in July of 2020, climate reality went virtual and had 7,500 people sign up to learn how to talk to their fellow citizens about the realities of climate in our world right now. Side note, I took the training back in Toronto in 2015. And interestingly enough, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, this won't be news to you. But Christine and I both attended that training in Toronto in 2015, though we didn't meet there. So now that we have this platform of Earth Feels, I thought it would be a great time to get a refresher with the training. I would learn more, I would see more up to date images, scientific studies, what have you. And I knew that in five years time, the changes would be significant. Further destruction through flooding, drought, wildfires, species extinction, ocean acidification, yada, yada, yada. I mean, we see the images every day, right? So perhaps I should have expected to be overwhelmed. But in my Pollyanna way, no, I didn't really think about that going into it. And what I experienced this week was an incredible despair. And no, I'm not saying that to you to ask for your sympathy. I'm saying it more out of an understanding that I am not alone in feeling that despair. So I am also an empath. And for those of you who do not know the terminology well, we all know the terminology of empathy, right? Being the ability to emotionally relate to someone else. An empath is essentially someone who's like an emotional sponge. We pick up on the energy of others all around us. And not to get too woo-woo on you, but it's pretty understandable if you think about going to a concert or to a party and how your energy is uplifted, you, you get this high from being around other people and laughing and, and dancing and just happiness, and you absorb that happiness. And similarly, if you are with someone who is always a Debbie Downer and you spend time with them, you may come away with that wah, 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 Charlie Brown kind of sinking feeling. You've just picked up on their energy. So for people who are empaths, like myself, it's how we perceive the world. We perceive the world in feelings. Learning this about myself in later life, my good friend, Kathy Lindemeyer O'Brien, turned me on to this terminology maybe five years ago, and it was life-changing. Because what I realized in my research on empaths is that many times the sadness that I feel is not mine. It's that of the collective. So in taking this training this past week, a couple things occurred. One, the devastation in the last five years has become exponential. The flooding, the rain bombs that are being created, the the windstorms, the derochas, a terminology that I don't think we even knew about until what's happened just recently in in the Iowa cornfields. The wildfires, catastrophic wildfires in Australia last year, 2019, this year in California already, 
and it's not yet wildfire season. What we are seeing is devastating. And each event, this kind of came to me this morning, each event is like a note in a song. And maybe we don't hear all the notes at the same time, so we don't realize that we're listening to the song. But in watching the slide presentation that Vice President Gore showed us virtually over three nights' time about the destruction that's happening on our planet, all those notes were put together. And now I could hear the music. Now I could hear the cacophony of what Mother Earth has been telling us for a while. And we, in our distracted way as humans, don't bother to listen to. So, yeah. So how does this affect our mental health? The climate reality training was seven days long. And it wasn't all bad news. There's a lot of good news that's happening as well. More and more people are waking up every day to the fact that humans have created this disruption in Mother Earth's complex cycle of living. And if you're a subscriber to Gaia theory, like I am, Gaia theory essentially says that Earth is a complex, living, breathing entity. She has a balance, and we have disrupted that. How could we not? We've extracted coal and fuel from her core. We've burned her trees, cut down her trees, that the trees of the living lungs of the Earth, cut down the trees, burned them, sent CO2 into the air. Agricultural farming has not only taken carbon out of the soils, but destroyed any little creepy crawly creatures, any microorganisms within that soil that we are meant to share this planet with. The methane that's produced from the number of cows necessary to feed our red meat addiction, all those things add up together. Again, they're all notes in a song. Anyway, seeing all of that together, I had this overwhelming response of despair. And literally, I took to my bed for a couple of days. I was reading and it was raining outside, so it made it easier. Long-term Seattle living has made me susceptible to the idea that if it's sunny outside, I need to be up and about and doing things and I can't rest. So I do welcome those rainy days where I can just hang out. But it was the effect of the climate training, I think, that that put me in the space of despair. And my empath self, I believe I really heard Mother Earth, the song of Mother Earth. All the notes were put together. I heard the song of Mother Earth and needed to stay in my bed and and cry. And the waves of the emotion that came through kept me in, in crying jags. And then I would be able to breathe for a while. And then the wave of emotion would come through again. And I would cry and rest and cry some more and rest some more and cry some more. And and literally that went on for maybe 36 hours. And I'm not telling you this because I'm not telling you this because I want your sympathy. I'm telling you this because I know there are many of you out there who feel this energy as well. I've long subscribed to the idea that highly sensitive people are merely the canaries in the coal mine. So it's no accident that the number of people on antidepressants right now is through the roof. And I can look up some statistics. I can put some links on Earthfield's podcast page, confirm the findings that more people are depressed, suicides are up. How do we explain this? Well, the world has gotten more complex, certainly. And COVID-19 doesn't help with its isolation. Isolation is a big factor in depression for a lot of people. We are social beings. And then there's obviously the personal stuff. I mean, there's always stuff, right? Issues with your parents or issues with your kids or your job or your boss or your neighbor or your wife or your husband or whatever. There's always personal stuff too. But what I got this week and what I know in my gut is that Mother Earth is talking to us and she's crying and she's crying out and we're hearing her. We're feeling her in our hearts and in our guts. And it's created this response in all of us that's affecting our mental health. Well, mental health because it feels like our brains are broken. But it's not really our brains that are broken. It's our hearts that are broken. 
So are you being affected by it? Do you tear up just hearing about the destruction? Or do you turn away? And denial is a response to great grieving. I think we've reached the time. Well, we're, we're far past reaching the time. We've come to a crossroads. Are we going to do what's necessary? Or are we going to just ignore it like we have up until now? I also believe, which may sound crazy to some of you, I also believe that COVID is probably one of the greatest gifts we've been given. It's given us some time to slow down and actually look at our priorities. And if you see the craziness and the chaos that's going happening here in the States and around the world, but especially here in the States where we are so used to being distracted, we're addicted to distraction here in the United States. People are rebelling. They want to go back to their distracted lives because it's painful to see what we've created. It's painful when you know that you are the cause of destruction. And yet there's a gift in that acknowledgement. Because acknowledging that we're part of the problem is the moment that we can start to make things better. So yes, Mother Gaia is speaking to us. She's crying out to us and we're hearing her. And that's the response. That's what you're feeling right now. You're feeling empathy for Mother Earth. If you're struggling right now, you're feeling empathy for Mother Earth. You're not crazy, even though it might feel like it. In actuality, you may be one of the sane ones. Um, So after my 36 hours of crying. And actually, there was rage mixed in there too. I mean, I want to just throw things and break things. And but underneath of rage and underneath, underneath rage is fear, fear for what we were doing. Are we seeing our time here? Are we seeing the end of humankind? Because really, mother will go on. She's been here a lot longer than we have. But we are just one species on this planet. And as much as she loves us, I don't think she's going to let us destroy every other species in order to maintain our consumption model. So that's a lot. I know it's a lot. Um, But after those 36 hours, it was like a valve. I just had to release all this stuff. I'm much more clear headed and, and grounded and feeling lighter than I've felt in a long time. I I think my response was holding it in for so long. And yes, Christine and I are both in this climate work and we read a lot on a daily basis and absorb a lot on a daily basis. And the truth is very painful right now. Is our mental health being affected by climate change? I would say yes. I know mine is. I hope that this confession, this feels like a confession, Catholic girl that I am, Hopefully my personal story will help you admit to the grief that you're feeling right now. So sanity tip, allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to feel, see it, feel it, acknowledge it. The only way is through the crisis. You have to feel it and go through it. Can't avoid it. Avoidance is what's caused the problem. Action step. Can you commit to doing something for the planet every single day? whether it's talking to your neighbor about what you're seeing, whether it's writing an, a piece to your new, local newspaper, creating a blog, whether it's going to the beach with a bag and picking up the plastic, whether it's walking through the woods and picking up trash, whether it's hugging a tree and feeling the beautiful energy of the earth and, and adding to the collective uplift. Can you commit every day to one action, just one, more if you got it, but, but one, it's a start in the right direction. Can you share what you're feeling with the people around you? It's a huge elephant in the room. Doesn't get better by not saying it. Doesn't get better by pretending it doesn't exist. And yes, there is good news. There's always good news, right? Hoboken, New Jersey is suing the oil industry for climate impacts from its deceptive actions. Again, I will put the link on Earthfield's podcast page. But basically, the lawsuit is seeking to recover costs associated with climate impacts like extreme flooding and sea level rise. And there's a bunch of climate liability lawsuits targeting the fossil fuel companies. But Hoboken's lawsuit alleges that the oil and gas companies and their lobbying group not only knew about the climate harm resulting from their products, but actively engaged in campaigns of deception. That's great news. On the political front, Joe Biden named 
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and John Kerry to lead his climate task force. So that's kind of great because Kerry's more old school, AOC's more new school. That's exciting to see. I've got some other links that I've picked up from the Climate Reality Project about good news as well. So I'll include those. Anyway, hope hope you're all doing well. and hope you're all taking care of yourself. This is a, an incredibly chaotic time. And the, the pandemic really has illuminated everything. But I came across this one last thing that I want to share with you in this chaotic time, because I think it's, it's important to shift our focus a little bit. While we need to be able to release what we're feeling, and in order to do that, we have to acknowledge that we're actually feeling it, we can shift our focus. And so I came across this meme that I want to share with you. It's written by Leslie Dwight, and I don't know her personally. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awaking us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. No, 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks for listening. Christine and I will be back next week, sending love and light to all of you and blessings for our planet. Bye-bye. That's this week's episode of Earth Feels. Special thanks to singer-songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me.